What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Kali, and it's time for a little DIY. And today's project is kind of a sequel to one of my most popular DIY videos, and that's the Chainmail Dice Bag. And with this being a sequel, I think it would only be fitting to increase the difficulty of this project by using my favorite method, shrinking. Now, before I get any further into this video, I do want to address one of the more common questions I get whenever I talk about this project online. And that's how many dice can I fit inside of these itty bitty dice bags? And the answer is maybe one or two if you're going with regular dice. However, I actually designed these with mini dice in mind because if I go ahead and dump this bag out, you will see that I have an entire seven piece mini dice set. Makes sense, doesn't it? Mini dice bags, mini dice. I actually have a ton of these little dice sets after buying the Halfling's Haversack not too long ago, and I got tired of storing each set in itty bitty baggies, so that's where my love of micro chainmail came in. If you're wondering why I'm going with the blue and yellow color scheme, that's because I'm looking to match this little dice set right here, which is a miniature version of this one that I re-inked in a previous video which in turn was inspired by my love of the Fallout franchise. But of course, you can still make the monochromatic bag I showed earlier without changing the pattern at all, just ignore the parts where I say switch colors. One last thing before we jump into this, if you're wondering where I got all of my links, I actually made them myself using a method I talked about in yet another previous video. And I bought all of the wire at my local Joann Fabrics because they're the only ones that carry this nice yellow color for a reasonable price instead of just brass or some other kind of fake gold. For this project, you're going to need 481 20 gauge chainmail links, with 480 of those being wound with an internal diameter of 1 8 of an inch, and one additional link with an internal diameter of 3 16 of an inch. You'll also need two sets of pliers without teeth to avoid tool marks, as well as some cord. In my case, I'm using a polyester rat tail cord with a diameter of 1 16th of an inch because I have a ton of that on hand. To start things off, I went ahead and closed eight of my 1 8th of an inch links and opened my 3 16th of an inch link. Take the larger link and thread it through each of the smaller links. When you're done, you'll have a nice little jumble just like this. Next up, you're going to add another row of links. First, you open one of your small links and thread it through two of the links on the previous row. Next, you open another of your small links and then thread it through one of your two previous links as well as the one next to it. Continue to do this until you've added eight links total. When everything's said and done, you should have something that looks like this. You'll know that you did it correctly when you have the tops of the first row of links running in one direction and the tops of the second row of links running in the opposite direction. For the curious, this weave is called European 4-in-1. However, we are not finished with our second row of links yet because this is going to be an expansion row. All you need to do is take one of your small links and insert it between two of the links that you've already added making sure it runs through only one of the links in the previous row. Do this until you have a total of 16 links on the second row. To start off row 3, you're first going to add 16 links using the standard European 4-in-1 weave. Once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Now once again, this is an expansion row, so we're going to be adding 8 more links. To start things off, find any two links and insert an extra link between them, once again making sure it only runs through a single link on the previous row. Next, you're going to move over two links and insert your next expansion link. Do this for each of the eight expansion links. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this. To start off row 4, first add 24 links. And when that's done, you're going to be adding 8 more expansion links. Once again, start off by finding any two links and inserting an expansion link between them, making sure it runs through only one of the previous row. This time, you're going to move over 3 links before adding your next expansion link. Do this until all 8 of the expansion links have been added. For row 5, you're just going to be adding 32 more links. Row 4 was our last expansion row. Now because I'm using two colors to make this bag, starting at row 6, I'm going to be transitioning from yellow links to blue links. And I'm going to be using blue links for the next 7 rows, so I'll be back when I'm done with those. Now because I was using the same number of links starting at row 5, the bag finally started taking shape. 
but now that I have eight rows of blue links, I'm going to be transitioning back to yellow links, starting with two more rows of 32. Now it's time to do something a little bit different. First, add three links. Next, skip one link and add another group of three links, and then continue this pattern until you've added 24 links to this row. When you're done with that, you should be left with eight small flaps, and to finish off the bag, what we're going to do is taper each of those off. And that's as simple as adding three more links to each of those flaps. All you do is add a row of two links to each flap, and then one link to tie those two links together. Now the last thing you need to do is to thread your cord through the flaps, and for that I'm going to be using about four feet of the cord I showed you earlier. There's a reason I'm using so much. But for now, all you need to know is you take the top link, bring the cord all the way through, like so, and repeat around the outer edge. And there you go. Now, as for why I use so much cord, first off, when I close my bag, I actually tie a knot in my cord, though that's not mandatory. Instead, you could use a bead as a friction lock as long as the diameter of the hole is slightly smaller than the combined diameter of the two pieces of cord, and I found that about three millimeters is pretty much perfect for the cord that I'm using. And I even made a bead out of a mini D20 that I cast out of resin, but I wasn't the biggest fan of how it looked with the bag based on scaling. I need to find something a bit smaller. The other reason why I'm using so much cord is simply because I'm not the biggest fan of clasps. Instead, what I do is put a little sliding knot on the end of my cord like so, and that allows me to slip this over my head and then adjust the length of the cord accordingly. And as for how I tie that, well, first I take one end of my cord and just tie a basic knot like so. Then I take the other end of my cord and do the exact same thing, like so. Next up, I take both ends of the cord with the knotted side facing me, bring it around and through like so, making sure I leave just a little slack. This knot is meant to keep the cord from sliding back through. And then I do the same thing on the other side, just around and through. When everything's said and done, you will have a nice pair of sliding knots so you can make this any length you want. And that's about it. All that there's left to do is put either a mini die set or your lucky D20 into your bag and you're good to go. And in case you're wondering, I have not tried putting these on a keychain yet. It might work, it might not. I don't know how well the copper links are gonna hold up. However, if you get your hands on the right size of steel wire to make these links, go ahead and give that a shot on a keyring and let me know how that turned out in the comments down below. But for now, I need to get back to polishing some dice sets that I'm working on. So, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.